I want y'all to know that I got fired. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that out there. I got fired. <laughs> um, I'm, I was in the process. I was trying. But Corey was trying to help me. I was even going to go buy a new laptop, spend $500 on it. But no, no. I got fired. So I got the bulletins took from me. I can't do them no more. I was told I was incompetent. Oh, not <laughs> I was told that, 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 that they could do it better than I could. And there was things in there that needed to be. No, seriously. I, I, I thank God for, for, for this uh, being handled. Uh, the bulletins look great. Can I get an amen? amen? Sister Denise, thank you. Anything that you do. And I know your children has had this beat in them. You do it to your best, and you make sure it is the best. And the bulletins are great. And thank you for lifting that burden. You see, I don't know if you two have picked up on this or not, but God has put you here, and he's put you to work. Amen. You played a role so we can stay dry. We've been trying to get this accomplished for how many years? Four years. Three to four years. Even had complaints from the people that's donated money want to know why our roof wasn't on. Well, it's God's time and not ours. And look at the time and God had. We basically didn't put a penny in it. Amen? That's how God works. We can go ahead and he'll let you pay for it unless you want to let him pay for it. And then, you know, the ministry that your children bring to this church. Sister Kim can vouch for this. What a blessing they are. Why? It's the fruits of your spirit. I love your children just like they're mine. And um, they are mine. I love them. I love Jade. I love Kirsten. And, 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 and I remember when Kirsten was crawling up the, remember? She would come crawling down the aisle, and, and she wanted to preach. And I'm telling you, she's got a voice today. You've got to be on her level, not her on yours. That's the anointing of God on that child. And you got Lexi and Lacey. I love them. Love them all. I remember Jake and, and, and Gracie in Sunday school and when I was meeting all with the children on Friday nights. And what a blessing. Love them all. Love them all. It's, it's, look what they're growing into. Amen. Not only are they beautiful, they're intelligent, and they know the ways of the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. And what I want to talk about this morning, Brother Keith, is the, the devil has four strategies, and we're going to cover two this Sunday, and then part two will be next Sunday. The four strategies of the devil. The four strategies of the devil. And we're going to be in different places in the Bible, and, and I'll give you the other two when I get through studying uh, this week, rushing up on the second part to this series. And I'm going to tell you all something. God good. He tells us how to, you know what? Uh, well, let's just read uh, the first uh, scripture that we're going to be reading this morning. You will find in 2 Timothy chapter, uh, one, uh, chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. Now, there, uh, we're going to read this passage first, and then we're going to jump back to John chapter 8, verse 44. Uh, I want to go over the first two strategies of the devil. The first strategy of the devil, and it's his best strategy, is fear. And we're going to cover that this morning in verse 7. If everybody says, say amen. amen. And this is what God's word says, and may God bless the reading of his word, and all God's children say amen. amen. Listen to this. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Can I get an amen? amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I want to thank you this morning, Lord, first and foremost for your word. I'm telling you, there's no way, no way that we'll be able to conquer these four strategies without the word of God. And I thank you this morning, Lord, that not only have you, do you speak to us through the Pentecostal Holy Ghost fire from heaven, but you also have given us a book, Lord God, that we can reference and follow and learn and, and use to get through 
this this short time that we're down here on earth. And I love you today, Lord, and I thank you, God, for everything you do for me. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Listen. The enemy, you understand the enemy, he installs fear. He installs fear. That's what he does. He knows. You know that, uh, that, that in God's word, that a hundred and ten times fear God is in the Bible. Apparently God wanted us to understand that, Tim. Uh, I mean, 110 times, that's quite a few times in Scripture that, the, that God took the time to tell his children, fear not. Look how many times he told uh, uh, Joshua when he was coming, when he had to take Moses' place, fear not. Joshua 1, 9, fear not, for I am with thee. Fear not. For I am with thee. He said it two times back to back to him. Apparently he knew that Joshua looked at these over one million plus children of God of Israel that he had to lead now because Moses had passed away and they were fixing to step over into the promised land. That's a big responsibility, Brother Andy. God knew that Joshua, the enemy, was trying to install, put in him fear. That's what the devil does. The, the number one strategy of the four that I'm going to cover the next two Sundays, his number one strategy, Caleb, is fear. Look at how the world has been shut down and is still trying to be shut down for the past three years. You remember 2019, Sister Kim? Gas was low. Life was good. You could go anywhere you wanted, eat anything. You know what I found out Friday, Brother James? Zaxby's? They didn't, they didn't put uh, uh, main, their new menu, uh, retired, retired. They don't do the Cajun Club anymore. They're, they don't do uh, a whole kind, all kinds of stuff. Don't do it anymore. Now all they serve is chicken sandwiches, spicy chicken sandwiches, the little, I call them turds, being funny, but they're the cheese curds, amen, and, 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 and french fries, that's it. There's a lot been retired since 2019. You know what was retired more than anything? Lack of fear. And you know where it started? In God's house. You know what the result was? God's children sat at home. Couldn't go out. Couldn't go to church. That's the first thing they went after, right, Sister Kim? Shut the church doors. I sleep the liquor stores and the hardware stores and the, all the other stores open, but you can't go to church. The enemy knew exactly what he was doing. But a lot of goods come out of this, too. A lot of parents realized their children were being uh, programmed by, by the, the way far off, way far off people that was trying to teach their children like critical race theory and homosexuality and you know what uh, if you decide to be a boy tomorrow Marissa you can in today's society you can say I'm not a, I'm not a woman anymore I'm a man and everybody's going to say okay or vice versa Corey uh, you better not but you can tell everybody that you're a female tomorrow and everybody's going to be okay with it because that's just the way the world is now but let me tell you what comes from all this chaos fear fear because see if you don't agree that marissa wants to be a man well you're in trouble now because everybody's going to attack you uh, you know uh, that uh, there's been a lot going on this week in the world a lot um, but they're now, the, not only did they uh, attempt, an uh, attempt on Justice, uh, is it Comey, Barrett, huh? Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh. Now, the, 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 the other one, is it? Is, Barrett, the one that just got. Is, the female, what was her, Amy, Amy. Barrett. Comey huh? Barrett, Amy, Amy Comey Barrett. They even told everybody where her children was, where they went to school at. Nothing's been done about it. Nothing. 
society has taken a turn for the worse. And, and, and listen, uh, I don't know, uh, but I don't feel as safe as I used to when I'm out and about today. I just don't. I now feel like that I have to protect me, my wife, or whoever I'm with because nobody else is going to as far as we don't have enough law enforcement, we don't have enough. Society's sick is where I'm going with this. Amen. But in order for fear to enter, it has to be installed. How does the devil do that? Well, he's got many tactics. Uh, he, listen, what he does is... He challenges, listen now, he challenges the promises of God. He challenges them. He did it with Jesus, with the three temptations that I so commonly reference. He, he, he did it with uh, all the disciples and, and all the, the apostles. He, he challenges the promises of that God has given us. That's his number one tactic. A, a, a general in the Japanese army way back when made a very, very important statement, a very true statement that I believe can reference the Christian walk today. And this is what he said. When, you're, when you underestimate the power of your opponent, you then that day will become captured. When you underestimate the power of your opponent, then that day, that day you will become captured. And that's a very true statement and from the war side of things. But are we not in a spiritual war? The worst thing you can do is underestimate the power of the devil. Amen. Remember, he is an angel, a fallen angel. Remember, he has the entire world, Tim, at his begging call. I'll give you all a prime example. Well, let me just back up a little bit. The reason I titled this message Being Stung is because you all have heard this week, Thursday I got stung three times by a wasp. My whole left leg was swelled, even my ankle, and itching. If I'd have had a, a wire brush, I couldn't have been satisfied enough to get this itching under control. And then yesterday, uh, before Corey shows up to help me in the shop, I roll over on a scorpion and get nailed right on the back center of my shoulder. Felt like a you're right getting shot with a 22. The devil is out to sting you. Now, what does a wasp and a scorpion have in common when in reference to their stinger? They don't die. Number one, they can keep stinging you over. A yellow jacket, when it stings you, it pulls its half its intestines out. Yes, it dies. A wasp can keep ejecting. What, what, what do they inject in you? Poison. Poison. Both a scorpion and a wasp and a hornet and all the rest of them things, they can sting you, Miss Betty. They inject poison. That's exactly what the devil does. That's how he installs fear. Fear is nothing more than poison from beneath. Poison. That's all it is. And how much poison have we allowed in our homes and in our walks? And how much poison have we injected in our children because of what they see, how they see us reacting, not acting, but reacting to everything that's going on? How much poison then, Sister Kim, are we injecting into our children? When we need to be injecting antibiotics, meaning the Word of God and prayer and everything else that we're going to cover this morning. But, Sue so Sue, the first thing that the devil tries to install in you and me is fear. Fear. How then do we counter attack fear? I've got four things that I come up with. Number one, meditate on God's word. Meditate on God's word. Y'all remember in the word 
It's in John 10.10. 10. It's the very, it's part A. We normally like to quote part B where Jesus said, I come into the world so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But part A of that reads like this. For your adversary, the devil, come to kill, steal, and destroy. The Bible also says, we're going to cover this morning, that he's the chief of all lies, the father of all lies. But meditating on God's word does one thing for me. Man, there's all kinds of promises in here. Amen. Not only is there promises in here, there is a plan of attack on anything that we deal with in God's word. Do y'all believe that? If you do, say amen. amen. Not only do we meditate on God's word, but you speak the word of God. The Bible says, see, see, there is life and death in the tongue. You can speak life for yourself and death to the devil and his lies and his trickery. Or you can speak death on yourself or others too, by the way. Be cautious of that tongue of fire. But you've got, not only do you meditate on God's word, you speak God's word, Corey. You've got to say it out loud. Let him hear it. Don't whisper it. Don't mumble it. Tell him, Sir Thomas, you're a liar. I've got scripture that says you're lying. Jesus did. What did Jesus say in them, four te- or them three temptations? The very first thing that came out of his mouth on the first two was this. It is written. Thou shalt uh, uh, serve the Lord thy God and him only. Thou shalt not live off bread alone, but out of every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. But before he said all those, he said, it is written. He knew the word of God. Why? Well, he was God, but still he meditated on it. He spoke it. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power unto your salvation. Amen. That's the scripture itself. Not only that, you got to rebuke it. Have y'all ever rebuked anything? I have. I rebuked the devil daily. As a matter of fact, I had to uh, Friday. You see, I was sharing with the Sunday school class that unfortunately I had to move somebody off my crew. The guy that had a problem with the travelers that I told y'all about. Well, problem showed up again this third time and I, I just had enough so I went to my superintendent and I said he's got to go. Well, I was thirsty. And Friday, I had to go to Building 5, and I knew I was going to be approaching this guy. He was going to be there. Because the foreman I had to approach was his foreman. And I said, uh, Thomas, I said, can you walk with me, buddy? We need to go look at the HMDs. And he said, yeah, and, and, and Wooly is, is what they call him. And he said, whoa, 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 where are you going? You just going to walk off and ain't going to talk to me about what you did? Now, here's what happened on my walk over. Lord, I've put on the armor. I've got peace on my feet. I'm going to walk up there in peace. I'm going to be peaceful. I've got that shield of faith. You're out in front of me, young man. I ask you to send my angels over, Father, and go ahead and set up this. Go ahead and set up the arena. I need my angels there to protect me. And Lord, I'm, I've got the helmet of salvation on, so whatever I speak, I know it's going to be knowledge. It's going to be wisdom. It's not going to be how I feel. Because you know how I am, Lord. If I go up there in me, it's going to be a fist fight. So I went up there, and, and, and when he started, he called me everything I believed that a man could be called. Uh, and it wasn't pleasant. It was, it was pretty, it's the worst I've ever let a man talk to me, first of all. But when he got done, this is what came out of my mouth. I know this was from God. I said, Wooly, you did this, not me. But if you want me to, I'll take the blame for it. If it'll make you feel better. But friend, you done this, not me. And I seen it hit. That hit. God's wisdom hits. It don't miss. Amen. And then he really let me know what he felt about me. And my foreman grabbed me and spun me because he saw me getting antsy and walked me away and said, you don't need to hear that. That's not the truth anyway. I said, I know. 
but thank you. You never know when the devil's going to try to install fear. But he will do it on a daily basis, no matter where you're at, no matter what's going on. He will try to put fear in you. Actually, that's what he does. He loves for you to be scared. That way he can control you. Right, Marissa? Once he puts fear in you, he's got you, don't he? So he thinks. But when you're a child of God, he's only got you as long as we allow him. Amen? So you've got to meditate on God's word. You've got to speak God's word. You've got to rebuke fear. But the fourth one, and this is the most important one, and I, we're going over this very thing in Sunday school, you got to pray in the Spirit. If you're not praying in the Spirit, I hardly doubt your words are getting any higher than you are tall. But if you're praying in the Spirit, Tim, first of all, Spirit being the key word, the Holy Spirit is going to take things over for you. Amen. He ain't just our, he don't just give us words, he's our comforter. Amen? So the first, first thing, the very number one strategy of the devil, Corey, is fear. And you've got four things here on how to defeat it. Meditate, speak, rebuke, and pray. You do those four things, fear is going to disappear. And then you can even quote verse 7 of 2 Timothy there. I don't have a spirit of... This is what you say, devil, it is written. I don't have a spirit of fear. I've got a sound mind and a good doctrine. So move on to the next one because it ain't going to work here, buddy. Amen? Speak it. Now, let's turn back to John chapter 8 for number 2 quickly. The second strategy of the devil is he tries to lie to us. He tries to make you believe a lie. And he's good at that, but listen to what John chapter 8 verse 44 says. If everybody's there, say amen. If you ain't taking notes, I don't want to hear you crying in a couple of weeks that you're eaten up with fear and now you believed a lie. Amen? This is what God's Word says. If nothing else, Sister Denise, in the new bulletins that's better than mine, there's a slot there for notes. Sermon. She even put it. Notes of sermon. Didn't you? Yeah, sermon notes. Verse 44 reads like this. You are of your... Now, this is... This is the Lord Jesus. This is what he's saying to the, uh, it ain't fair you see because I'm sad you see. The Pharisees and the Sadducees. This is what he's saying to him, Corey. That's what Jesus told him. And this is in reference to your, the devil, our adversary. You are of your father, the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And he does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks it from his own resources. He is the father, the Bible's read, read on, he is the father of what? Of it. He's the father of it. And, and then he goes on to say this. He was a mur He says he is the father of it. And, and Jesus says, because I tell you the truth, listen to this. You do not believe me. Why? Why would somebody who's telling a lie not believe the truth? Because it's what they think, right? But Jesus just sat here and told us, Tim, he's telling the devil, you're a, you're, you're a liar. You get your lies for your own resources, and you're the father of all lies. You're the father of it. What does that tell us this morning? You know how he gets us, tries to get us to believe a lie? Hi, somebody, listen, I've preached on this, so you see if y'all were paying attention. And actually, you mentioned it in Sunday school this morning, so you can't answer where is the first place the devil goes to try to make you believe a lie?
Come on, don't be scared if you answer wrong. Huh? Oh, he's definitely going to visit your home. But where at in your home? Where's the first place he goes to make you believe a lie? The relationship with God. That's what comes next after. And your heart is what acts on what you just believe. But there's one place everything we do starts. Where is it? With a thought. He has to go to your thoughts first. And the first thing he tries, just like Jesus in the garden, or in the wilderness, he knew Jesus had been fasting Miss Betty for 40 days and 40 nights. He knew he was hungry. And I guarantee you, as I've said before, he had them stones laid out, sliced, just like a loaf of bread. And he said, if you are the Son of God, there's the beginning of, of a thought in Jesus' mind. Well, am I really? Doubt. But it starts with a thought. Turn these stones into bread. What did Jesus say? I love it. It's written. It is written. There's that meditation on God's word. Amen. But he starts with a thought. He wants to make you believe what he's... And Brandy said it too. He'll make you believe a lie. And I'm about... Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Brother Mike, Listen. And this is really, if you really want to know how to defeat the four strategies of the devil, how about putting some of that armor on that God put in here for us? Actually, all of the armor of God. Because you ain't going to do, nothing's going to go down with you in that armor on. What I mean, you ain't going to go down. But if you got the helmet of salvation on, you got Jesus' mind, not yours. Brother Mike, in, 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 in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, my brother, this is what God's Word says. For you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Well, that tells me that I wasn't wrestling with Wooly. That was the devil himself. So all I had to do was stand because I had my shoes of the gospel of peace on, glory, to stand there in peace. I had the breastplate on, so my heart was protected. I had the helmet of salvation on, so my mind, my thoughts, was protected. I had the shield of faith already out in front of me, because I sent Jesus up there to go ahead and set the arena up. And guess what? He was the bouncer. Amen. And my father and my brother, you don't want no part of them. I promise you that. I also, I also had the Word of God, but you know what I was doing? I was praying all the way up there. I was meditating on the Word. I was speaking. I was rebuking. I was putting into practice what I already am in position, a child of God. And I walked away. That's the best I've ever felt, walking away from being cussed out and called everything you could be called. I ain't never felt good about that, but I did fight him. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So the first place the enemy is going with this strategy is your mind. The second place, he is in our insure in insecurities. Do you believe that? If he knows what you're insecure about, woo, woo, get ready. Now, everybody in this sanctuary, I don't care who you are, how old you are, you've got insecurities. Everybody's got them, Sister Kim. I got them. I do. I'll just go ahead and tell you I do. Y'all may not. Maybe I'm the only one. Well, me and Kim, we're the only ones in here. Amen. Thank you, Sister Kim. I'm glad you stood with me. He's going to hit you in your thoughts. He's going to hit you in your insecurities. How do I know this? Because I've been down this road too many times. Amen. What, what is an insecurity, Caleb, since you're a college graduate? What is the definition of insecurity? Where does that, yes, but where does that start? Exactly. I'm going to keep pounding this thought thing. Your insecurities come, they come from our own thoughts. It don't matter so much. Listen, it was, it was installed in you, though. Do you know that an insecurity is part of fear? You could put that under the definition of fear, some of the categories. Insecurity would be there. Miss Betty, now I know you ain't insecure about nothing because... 
you done been down every road that we could possibly travel and some we ain't traveled yet. I'm going to tell you something. That bunch sitting back there, if you need any advice, go ask them. And, if, and listen, you better get ready. Because Miss Betty ain't going to cut you no slack, are you? No. You know why she's not? Because she's an elder and she's a child of God and she wants you to know the truth. Thank you, Miss Betty. Thank you, Miss Mary. Thank you, Sister Lena. And thank you, Sister Girl. I appreciate y'all. I love every one of you. You know why? Because you're going to keep your pastor and this congregation in check. But Mike, that is y'all's responsibility as elders. Do you believe that, brother? I, I didn't forget about the right side of the church. Amen. I see you back there, brother. I keep forgetting you as old as you say you are. I just can't get that. I can't, still haven't clicked. I hope I can get around as good as you can. If I'll stay away from the wasp and the scorpions, I might be all right. So number three, he gets access to our lives when we allow him to convince us of a lie. Once he gets access to our lives, get ready. You just gave him full access to everything. How do we give the devil, Sister Denise, access, you better answer this right, access to our lives? Where, where does he come? And Thomas, uh, uh, wait a minute. Somebody said it when I asked the first question about in the first part of this. How does he get access to our lives? Well, yeah, I know that, but where does he get full access to our lives? Where does it start? I mean, where? Who said that? Home. Home. He, we, we walk him right in. Now, some might say, that's not true. I don't ever walk the devil in my house. <laughs> liar. He's going to call you out. You're lying. You're, you're, you're lying. Everybody allows the devil, and we walk him right in our house. And it may not be every day, but it's going to happen once a week, I can promise you that. How do we do it? Well, the first thing we should do when we're walking in our home, I do it in my car, Sir Thomas. Especially after Friday. It wasn't Jenny's fault. And who am I to come and complain to her anyway, considering what she battles with every day? wasn't her fault. So why would I go in and, and, and take it out on her? So what I have to do every day before I get out of my car, first thing I say is, thank you, Lord God, for allowing me to make it home and get through this day. Now, what went down today, Lord, it was, it's not my wife's fault. And I don't need to be in a bad mood anyway. I thought I had the shoes on. I, I just called myself out first. And I want to go in that house, Lord. That is, that is the home you gave me. And the heart of the home is in there waiting on me to walk through that door. The peacekeeper. And I need to be in the right state of mind. Amen. My thoughts. I need to know, Lord Jesus, that I, I don't have I don't have no insecurities about what she's going to say when I start telling her. Because I'm going to tell you something, Miss Betty. Jenny will tell you how it is, too. She don't have no, she, you don't go to her with something. I cut, about cut my finger. I did cut the end of my finger off. It was hanging. And I said, what do you think we should do? Should I go to the emergency room and get stitches? No, it's just a cut, JR. Let's just super glue it. No sympathy. I was, I was hoping she said, yeah, let's go here. Let me wrap No, Lord, no. She didn't even put no salve on it for me. No sympathy. What? No empathy. She was a paramedic. You've seen it all, and it, it just kind of, you know, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. I believe I could cut my arm off and she'd, she'd tell me, it ain't no big deal. You got another one. My point is, we walk him in our house if we're not careful every day. So before you walk through the threshold of that door, coming in and going out, Lord, I need you to clean me up. I've been out in the world today. I need that anointing, you know, the blood of the lamb that I put above my mantle on each side of my doorpost fixing to walk into my house, Lord, and I need you to anoint me and clean me because I've been out in the world all day long. And then before I step out of that threshold every morning, here I go, Lord, I'm going into the world, so I need your anointing on me so I can succeed and get through this day till I can get back to my home. And while I'm gone, Lord Jesus, I beg you to put all my angels around my wife in this house and keep her safe till I get back to her because that's my soulmate. You can pray it 
and God hears you. Why? Because you are you have meditated on His Word and you know everything's true. Now, how do we counteract against the devil? Now, these are two scriptures that you need to write down. Uh oh, looks like I'm going with Sir Thomas after church. I see a boat hooked up to the truck. Hey, man, brother, you didn't tell me about that. No, here we go. Two verses. The Bible says, and this is uh, what Paul said, 2 Corinthians 10.5, Take every thought into captivity. And read that little section right there on what Paul says. Take every thought into captivity. What does that mean, Marissa? When you take something captive, what does that mean? You catch it, right? You ever caught a, like a little bug or something? I know you have. You like stuff like that. Catching spiders, catch them in captivity. Once it's caught, it's got. Amen? So if you can catch these thoughts in captivity before they begin to install into your mind. Now, I'm going to tell you all, if you're in here this morning and you are a true child of the King, every Daggum one of us knows an impure and a pure thought. Amen? Amen. We should. If we don't, um, I guarantee you Jade and uh, Ashley knows all about captivity. They can probably teach us a few things. Since you know, we all that now. We done, we done growed up and done done everything. And I'm going to tell you all something. These young adults have a lot of wisdom. And they might, something might just come out of their mouth and it might hit your spirit. And you realize, you know what? I just got corrected. Amen? Amen? Amen. I'd rather be a stepping stone than a stumbling block. So, Brandy, the first thing you got to do is take into captivity those thoughts. Right? Paul said, captivize them. Take them. If you've caught it, you've got it. And you can cast it out and say, you are a liar devil and the father of them. You're not welcome here. Move on. Not only that, the second thing that I got down here is you respond with the truth. And you'll find that in 1 Corinthians 2.16 because when you respond with the truth, Brother Mike, you have the mind of Christ. These are just two of the four strategies that the devil will use against us on a daily basis. Now you can take it for what it's worth or you can actually put it into action and stop reacting and start acting. That's up to y'all. Uh, God has given, he's given us, he's given us vital ammunition on how to defeat the devil and the lies of the devil. And I thank God for that. By getting stung by them three wasps and that scorpion started making me think about how I've been stung by the devil. Maybe I'm the only one in here. He's got his stinger in before. But once he injects that poison in us, it's all lies. It's all fear. And then next week we're going to cover the other two. But the first thing, listen, do you think I wasn't scared to death when I was sh in a shut in, the, in a, a single cab truck with the nest of the wasp was about that big. And they had built it right in. They crawled through that little bitty crack of the door frame and it was sitting right there at the top. And when I opened the door, poof, all of them come out, and I then shut the door. So I was in there with them. I got stung on the finger and twice on the shin bone. Don't, you don't want to get stung on the shin bone. It hurts. And then I had to get out, Brother James, and the whole time Jenny's throwing her hands on her. What are you doing? And I, she had no idea until she seen all of them coming out of the cab chasing me, and I went right over there towards them. No, I didn't. I, I, but I should have. Uh, but anyway, they meant business. And all they wanted to do was inject me with poison. That's what a wasp does. Normally when it stings something, it, that's the end of them. It kills them. It paralyzes their, their nervous system. Well, it paralyzed me for a second, son. Because when I was in that cab and I swat them out of my face and I was getting stung and I couldn't get to the daggum door. You know what? You open a door on a vehicle probably a thousand times a week, and the one time that I needed to find the door handle, I could. You know why? Because my mind was in a whole different place. Fear. I'm fixing to get eat up by these things. I was already getting eat up by them. Now, here's the thing about the second sting. 
And I'm referring this to the devil. See, the devil always has a hiding place. And he's waiting on you. Just like the wasp was waiting for something to open that door because they knew that was a dark, quiet place where they could do their nest. But you don't want to interfere with the wasp. Have y'all ever just tinkered with them and watched when you come upon them? They'll, they'll bow up at you. They'll put that head down, them wings up. Go ahead. Come get some. They'll tell you, you don't want to mess with them. Well, when I open that door, Brandy, here they come. What were they doing? You know, we can learn a lot from that. They were protecting their home. Why don't we bow up and get ready when the devil tries to come in on us? Come on now, I'm going to get real here. Why don't we bow up, Brother James, and get ready for action when he tempts us with something and we know God don't tempt man. God has never tempted man, nor will he ever. The only one that tempts us is the devil, Miss Betty. And we should bow up just like them wasps do and get ready to attack whatever tries to come in our home, especially when we got children. Or you can learn, you know, here's something else. Here's another way the devil is. You see, that scorpion was minding his own business. And I moved something out of my way so I could get down on my back and scoot up under that truck. Well, he was where he was supposed to be. And what happened? When I scooted down and I went to roll over, bam, he hit me. You never know where the enemy's going to be at, but you should always know who to call on when he does. Today we've heard two, two things, two actions, the, the two strategies of the devil, right? Number one is fear. He tries to bestow fear. Number two, he, is, he will make you try to believe his lies. Now we've got counterattacks, not counterreacts. When you react to something, you keep it going. When you act on it, you shut it down. For fear, and I'm going to close right here in a second, meditation, speaking, rebuking, and what was the fourth one? Pray. It's the most important one. And then for the believing his lies, Brother James, you've got to take captive those thoughts, right? And what was number two? Huh? You're close. Yeah, we have the mind of Christ. That's right. Speaking the truth. Speaking the truth with the mind of Christ. I want y'all to stand with me this morning. This is more of teaching, not preaching this morning. What God wants us to understand is, is you can walk around defeated or you can walk around victorious. In other words, you're either a victim or you're victorious. But I'm going to tell you something. We can always be victorious, Brother Keith, because we have the victor on our side. He's already defeated the devil. He's conquered death. He's conquered eternal life. That's all I need to know. And all I need to do is try my best that when the strategies of the devil comes my way, like those wasps who were hit or that scorpion that was in the dark, find the light. Amen. If our hearts are clear, everybody can walk out that door ready today. Because I'm going to tell you something. One of us that's in here this morning, the strategies of the devil is waiting on you when you get outside these doors. Amen. He's, he's either going to hit you with fear today, or he's going to try to come at you with a lie. Please question everything before you respond. Please. How many of you have ever made a fool of yourself? Because you did not pay attention to what God was trying to tell you. Raise your hand. Amen. Because we reacted instead of acting. Uh, listen, the altar's open, beloved. If you're worried about where you're at and what's going on in your life right now, the uncertainties, the insecurities that we covered, listen, all these things can be dealt with at the altar, on your knees in prayer, and in God's Word. You've got to meditate on God's Word. You've got to speak the truth. You've got to rebuke the devil. And you've got to pray to succeed. And then with the lies. Man, we know he's the father of all lies, Caleb. I, you know what you need to pray for this morning? If you don't already have it, Jade, I want you and Ashley and um, Olivia, 
If, if there was ever a prayer I could tell you three to pray this morning, ask God to give you the spirit of discernment Amen. if you don't already have it. And I'll tell you why. Those boys that's, that the devil's going to send your way, the ones that are going to try to train wreck your plans and what God's got planned for you, if you've got the spirit of discernment, you'll pinpoint them right away. They ain't no good. They're liars. I, or they're trying to, they're acting a way they shouldn't act. And you'll know because the Holy Spirit will tell you. And that's something you three need. Because I'm going to tell you something. There's guys out there like me and Sir Thomas and everybody else in here used to be before we got wise and known Jesus. They just want to, they, you know, they just want to, they want to use and abuse and move on. Right? So ask Jesus for the spirit of discernment. Get it now, please. I'm praying it for y'all. Uh, y'all need it. And and those of you adults in here that don't have it yet, I'm telling you, once you get that spirit of discernment, Brother James, everything changes. You won't be judging nobody no more. You'll be praying for them. Because you'll know they're not what they say they are. So it's been good to be in the house of God this morning, has it not? Amen. You've learned two strategies of the devil. And see soon. I know in the past you dealt with one of these. Amen. Marissa, I know in the past you dealt with number two. You succeeded. You beat it. And I thank God for it. I'm yeah. proud of you. Even though you do look like you was baptized in pickle juice yesterday with that green hair. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, Sister Kim, I'm going to ask if you'll close this awesome service, please. Sister Kim, and thank y'all for coming. And listen, get ready, because you don't know where it lies around the corner. Amen.